Jerry, you were in London at this uh, fancy hotel, the Royal Garden Hotel in Kensington, mm-hmm. watching the presentations. Mm-hmm. How important was a day like Monday, realistically? I presume everything's been sealed and delivered and put forward already? No, it wouldn't be. No? No, I don't think so. I mean, as Philip Brown said, there's always a few swing votes, but also nobody's going to really commit until the World Rugby Council, um, so the World Rugby Board, issue a recommendation on the 31st of October and... Um, if they come down heavily in favour of one bid, it would be surprised if that didn't sway it considerably. But uh, if, of course, if it comes down, if it's quite close and there's only marginally one choice over the other, and say two bids or all three are spoken very highly of, then the uh, canvassing of the last 12 months or so and for the next six weeks or so comes more into focus. Yeah. You uh, wrote in the paper that the Irish bid, the, the Irish presentation rather, was the most comprehensive, most impressive. I thought so. I could be biased and looking yeah. through green tinged glasses. I thought the French came on first and I, I was very disappointed in them. I don't know what year it was, early noughties, when they won the rights to the 2007 World Cup. And I remember Mike Miller, the then CEO, saying the French bid was beautiful. It just was a rugby-based bid. And mm. this is much more about we're going to try and buy this. They're going to just bully their way in there. And uh, As I understand it, we'll <clears> give £120 million the tournament fee. Yes. Whereas but the French and South Africans are willing to play 150 and 160 okay. and they're also promising profits of 250 and 300. And do we know how much weight is given to that kind of a thing? Well, money talks I in all sports. So. And yeah. um, the, apparently the World Cup in Japan is not going to yield the dividend for world rugby that they hoped or thought it might. Um, and this is partly in the basis perhaps that Japan is more focused on the Tokyo Olympics a year afterwards. In which case the Paris Olympics in 224 could count against the French. They're trying to make it sound as if it's going to be of benefit but you can't help but wonder that commercially in so many other ways that a Rugby World Cup would be something of a bridesmaid to an Olympics, which is, let's face it, is much bigger than a, than a Rugby World Cup. Um, they obviously have a lot more private money behind them. Altrad, Mohed, Mohed Altrad, um, in cahoots with Bernard Laporte and this bid. It's ironic that the Minister for Sport was there alongside Laporte and the Minister for Sport has ordered an investigation into Laporte's interfering and influence on the French Appeals Committee that reduced sanctions against Montpellier, Mohed Altrad's um, club, um, on foot of which seven of the Appeals Committee have resigned. So... It, and then they bring along Sebastian Cheval as well and they bring along Jonah Lomu's two kids which a lot of people just thought was quite tacky. It, it left me cold. It was distasteful mm. to put it mildly. I would yes, thought. I could think of val- many comparisons that others could try and use. It's, I didn't... I, it stuck in the craw a big time. It was yeah. a little bit... Tra- a tad gauche to put it, to put it mildly. Yeah. Uh, Keith, are you... Just, uh, uh, yeah, then the South on. African bid was much more impressive. Right. It's their fourth year in a row trying to bid, it, bid for it. Mm. You know, they have the stadia, um, but, but there are security issues. You see when they give away virtually free tickets for the Chiefs' double header last uh, weekend against in the Curry Cup and then the Leinster match. Anybody who um, tickets for the following week's game in the same ground for the Springboks against Australia was given free access to those matches and still only 6,000 turned up. Now, you know, Bobby Skins is saying on Sky Sports that in a few more wins like this and there'll be 20,000 on the ground. But meanwhile, the Kings... The, you would have to think that the South Africans might struggle to fill all these vast stadia like they said they're going to do. Um, and the Irish bid is much more on stream with their government and they're underwriting everything. And so, as Philip Brown says, it's money in the bank for the World Rugby Council mm. and it's a new bid and it will be a new host country. And they're talking about expanding the game. And I think the uh, although people have scoffed at this reaching out into the diaspora of 70 million, of which 40 million are in North America. There's no doubt that they could reach out there, and they've shown they can when you think 62,000 turn up in Chicago to watch Ireland play the All Blacks. And you know, they're talking about playing more games over in America in the next six years. That, that needs to be the case. So I thought it was a, I thought it was a fairly impressive bit. Certainly, um, Philip Brown had bamboozled us with statistics to show that Ireland is more than capable of um, hosting for an extra whatever number of 400,000 visitors for a World Cup that they we cited all these figures that come through Dublin Airport and so forth the one um, query you might have with all his various claims was all oh, the stadium are within two hours of Dublin anybody who's travelled any of the motorways when well, there's a little bit of a tip at tea time might venture to disagree with that in the same way you're always 10 minutes away from wherever you are in town but I always am well yeah <laughs> so Keith are you a favourite that's because I take public transport <laughs>